So today is primarily about then uh, just a, a tutorial on the on the Epley maneuver. Uh, so this is to treat the most common type of B P P P V. How many did I put the right number of P's in there? No. <laughs> benign, say yeah, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, and so little particles of your inner ear break off from where they should be and get in these little semicircular canals. <clears throat> semicircular canals are like little levels inside your head. So picture a level with a bubble, right? Uh, telling you where your head is relative to this plane, this plane, and that plane of motion. And the most common one is the posterior canal. Approximately 90% of them, uh, you know, kind of depends on whose stuff you read, right? I mean, all the experts don't agree, right? So don't know who to trust, but uh, this is definitely the most common one. And so that's usually best treated with the Epley maneuver. Um, and so we're gonna go through that. Uh, we're gonna pretend uh, we got right ear stuff today. Is that okay? I don't remember what it was for real. It was for real. Right, right, right. Okay. Have a seat right here, please. Okay. So scooch <laughs> back towards me a little bit. All right. So at home, you'd want to um, make sure you get to where you can scoot far enough back to where you can get off the edge of the bed with your head. Because uh, the idea is to try to get your inner ear apparatus upside down relative to gravity. Does that make sense? So it's not just about your neck position. It's about your head. head position relative to gravity, okay? So that's when you gotta be off the edge. So scooch back just a hair more. You know, you may want to have your glasses off so he can see the eyes better. Because a true positive test is not only you feeling vertigo symptoms, but also a distinct type of eyeball movement. So we'll talk about that more in a minute. So you're gonna lie back with your head turned to your right about 45 degrees. Come on back, let your head just kind of relax. And then he can just hold your head for you. Let your head relax there, because you need to hang down. And you need to keep your eyes open for me. Now you can blink if your eyes are getting dry or whatever, that's fine. Don't, don't feel like you have to hold them open constantly, but you don't need to close them for any extended period. Okay. And of course, uh, we want to stay here for the textbook answer is 30 to 60 seconds. I tend to stay a little closer to 60 because I, I did have a lady one time right at about 42 seconds into this test. She had the, uh, the spinning sensation and the eyeball mm -hmm. movement. So I've learned to not assume 30 seconds is enough. Um, so sometimes it takes a little while for it to show up. So you hang here about a minute and um, she can look wherever she wants and you're looking at her eyes, right? And of course you wanna make sure that uh, you observe any particular rhythmic eyeball movement. We call that nystagmus, one of those fancy words. And with the posterior canal, which is the most common one, you will see um, a kind of a diagonal movement of the eyeball. And then the iris of the eye will also kind of look like it's rotating a little bit while it's diagonally kind of moving. Uh, up, so do up I look normal today? You're looking pretty normal. I don't see any eyeball movement. Do you feel any mm -mm, room spinning yet. sensation? Nope. Good. And I was talking, so I should have been t counting or listening to my clock. It's probably been at least, you know, 30 seconds. So we'll wait another 20 something seconds, probably. You okay here as far mm -hmm. as your neck? Yep. Now, um, let's assume we did see the eyeball movement, right? Because that's what you guys want to know is if right. she's ever having an episode. Um, you want to test and see. So let's say she started getting the eyeball movement now and she started feeling the room spinning sensation like before. Then you would keep her here hanging down and now it's time to turn your head to the left while still hanging down, okay? All the way to the left. There. Well, about 45 degrees. Let it keep it hanging down though. It's important not to lift it up. There you go. And let him support your head while you do it, you know, so you don't have to strain the whole time. Right. Okay, and so you're about 45 degrees turned that way while still hanging down. This is considered position two. Notice how she's below the, the bed. You know, the head is actually hanging below the bed level of the bed there. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. All right, good. Um, you stay here roughly a minute. So if you can picture kind of thick fluids in these canals, the, the reason we have to wait a whole minute, or you don't technically have to wait a whole minute, but I do it just in case, you know, mm -hmm. is because you're trying to let any particles sort of slowly ooze to the bottom of that semicircular canal and you're using gravity to kind of slowly take it down there. So where people usually mess up is usually one of two things with the athlete is they don't hang off the bed enough and they don't have their inner ear upside down enough 
and they don't hold each position long enough. Those are the two things you know, people usually mess up on. And sometimes they don't have the head turned right or whatever, but it's usually usually not hanging off enough and usually not lingering long enough in each position for the particles to move. So this is position two. Now we're gonna to move to position three. A little um, warning for you if you're ever doing this, sometimes people will get a second spin. So like the first test position, you get that spinning sensation, you know? Sometimes you'll get it again throughout this whole process. The most common time is from going from two to three, which we're about to do, okay? You're gonna keep your head hanging down and you're gonna keep it turned to the left. You're just now gonna turn your body to where you're lying on your left shoulder. So you at this point, you at this point would get up off your chair and turn and help her, right? And be here to help her feel like she's, you know, stabilized. And you look down at the floor for him, there you go, while he's kind of helping support your head. So I typically, you know, hold the head with one hand and kind of brace the neck with the other. See that? Yep, I see that. Yeah. And for your own back, and just make sure you're not straining. <laughs> you take you take your um, elbow and forearm of your hand that's supporting your head, and you kind of brace it on your thigh. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Yes. See how yeah, I'm doing yeah, that? Yeah. So I can stay here for a while. Yeah, it's like a you know yeah leverage a tripod yeah, if you will. Exactly. And... I'm just turning my uh, arm into a piece of a tripod there, <laughs> and my leg is the extension of that tripod. You know. Right now, I wish I was using a tripod. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah your arms are getting a little tired there. Yeah. So you stay about, uh, you know, a minute or so here. And for the purpose of our demonstration, we don't have to stay a full minute long as we, as long as we mention that so you know to do it in the real, in the real scenario. Okay. Okay, so after she's been here a minute or so, then you kind of have her sit up on the side of the bed where she's, uh, she's facing right now. Now, if she started to spin at this point, where, what would you do? You, you might extend your minute, um, maybe 30 seconds. Okay. To make sure the particles have had time to settle. Usually the spin won't last all that long. It can be pretty intense on this third position. I had a guy one time almost pull me down to the ground because I wasn't, oh, wow. I, wasn't, I wasn't ready for him to freak out. Yeah. And he didn't mean to, and he apologized later. He didn't mean to, but he it was a big old fellow. Um, so it can be kind of violent, but it, the spin can be kind of intense, but it usually doesn't last long. So kind of let it pass, you know, you try to just kind of hang in there. Um, you, you know, the, the patient grabs the edge of the bed and whoever's helping supports the patient, and, you know, helps them through it. And, and then you just wait it out, you know, at least a minute or so past the spin. Okay, then you're gonna sit up for me, please. This time you're kind of looking down towards the floor with your head kind of in the center, not really rotated. And don't look up yet, just kind of grab the edge of the bed if you want. Kind of use that to make yourself feel stable. And you're actually technically supposed to stay in this position for a full minute or so before okay. you move around. So this is actually considered position four. So does that make sense on the on the yes, description? I think position, so. Position one is the test position. Yeah. If there's no eyeball movement and she doesn't feel any dizziness, that's a negative test, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You, then you just help her sit back up and, you know, calm whatever transitional, you know, uh, lightheaded feeling that you get from just hanging down and sitting up that would be there even if she didn't have the vertigo, you know? You let, it, let that pass and then you maybe test the other side to make sure it's not the other side. And this would be in the context if you're ever having symptoms again, you know? Mm -hmm. You would test both sides. Then for the left, it would be the exact opposite. She'd start out, you know, rotated to the left, hanging back, wait a minute, watch for the eyes, listen for her to say, I'm feeling the spinning sensation. Um, let that pass, make sure you're at least a full minute hanging there before you move. You're gonna go then, still hanging down, you would turn to the right side while hanging down. That's position two. Then you roll into right shoulder, looking at the floor, position three, and then sitting up at the edge of the bed looking down like she is now, that's position four. So it'd be just kind of the mirror opposite image of what we did for the right side. Clearly you teach this. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I've done it a few times. But that's, that's awesome. All right. So yeah. did you guys feel like you guys have enough details? For, oh, yes. Yeah. For what you need? And again, the, the two things people, when they, when, they, when they just read it on the internet and try yeah. to do it at home, the two things people mess up the most are they don't get the head off of that bed enough to get, yeah. it, to get that true upside down effect where gravity will cause it to pool. Like I said, picture a semicircular canal upside down like that. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get it to ooze to the apex of that canal. So you gotta be hanging off enough. So people mess that up sometimes and then they also mess up by not holding each position long enough. Okay. They'll go maybe barely 30 seconds and they'll move on. 
and that, that that's sometimes it's too fast. So you gotta try to do a full minute. Okay, Very good. Cool. I hope that Thank helps. You. Yeah. You now you get a break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just glad you're doing well and don't have any more recurrence. That's fantastic.